and every one of you as we gather here to worship today. It's good to see uh, all of you uh, as we come to gather in the Lord's house. And want to just quickly cover a few announcements. Uh, please sign the sign-in sheets that are on the inside of each pew, please, uh, so that we may have a copy, uh, a record of your time here today, and we we'll, can keep up with that. We would greatly appreciate it. I know that we've got a lot of folks that are out, or perhaps some still work in the kitchen, but uh, wanted you to please do that so we can have a record. Also, be sure that if you've not gotten your upper rooms therein, and the new newsletter. Uh, the newsletter's got a lot of information of things that we're going to be doing and the ministries of our church, but it also has in it our financial report as well as the minutes of our last, uh, most recent leadership team meeting so that all of you can be informed about what's going on in our church, and I hope that you will take advantage of that. Um, but again, it is great to see all of you here today. I hope that you're planning on staying to have lunch afterwards, uh, that we might fellowship together. The tables are set up, and I smelt the food when I came in, and my stomach's already growling, so if y'all hear it when I'm preaching, you'll know what it is. Don't let it scare you. Again, it's great to see everybody here today, and we're going to, I'm going to move out of the way after we have the opening prayer and let our choir call us to worship. Let's pray together. Father God, we just come before you, and we thank you for your presence with us in this place. We thank you, God, that your presence is always with us by your Holy Spirit. And God, we just ask that you make yourself known to us in this worship service today, for we ask this in the precious name of Jesus. Amen. stand together is join in singing precious name.
will you join me now as we affirm our faith in the historic Apostles' Creed? I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. On the third day he rose from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and sit at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From hence it shall come the judge, the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Amen. Now we're going to join together in singing hymn number 600, Wonderful Words of Life. Let's join together in a time of prayer. Heavenly Father, it is a joy to gather together in your name. For Lord, where your spirit is, there is the church. And we are gathered together with you and with one another to praise your name for all that you've done for us. For the grace that we don't deserve. And yet out of your great love for us, you share. And we just praise you for it. Lord, we thank you for our church and for the, ab the ability that we have to worship you. For we know that there are so many Christians in this world that don't have that opportunity. They have to hide their time of worship for fear of being persecuted. But we thank you that we can freely worship you. Lord, this morning we come before you to ask for the forgiveness of sin, the cleansingness, cleansness of Lord of anything that we've done wrong, and Lord, for asking for help in our lives. For God, it is very difficult in the world we live in. 
uh, to be able to witness and to share faith in a world that is so hostile, seems like, to the Christian faith, a world that is our nation becoming increasingly less Christian. But God, it reminds us that we're called to never give up and to keep on because, Lord, one of these days you're going to send your son Jesus for all that have believed in him to be forever with him. And, Lord, we want everybody we know to be able to know that they will have eternity with you. So give us the words we need to share. Lord, we pray for those that could not be here today for whatever reason. We ask that you watch over them. We know that we've got some away that are traveling, and we pray that you would watch over them and keep them safe. We know that some that are not feeling well, uh, hearing this morning from Gail and, and David Ushry that they weren't feeling well, and Lord, we lift them up to you. But God, I also want to pray for people in our nation that are Christian, that coming to church has become optional for them, that they would recognize that there is strength in being in a church and being involved in a church so that we can help one another's faith. And so we pray for them. We pray for the lost that they may be found. But God, I know that there are other prayer concerns that are on the hearts of my brothers and sisters this morning. And so please hear the prayer concerns that are shared today. Anyone? Anyone else? Any others? Yes. Father, we just ask that uh, you continue the healing for Dean. We thank you that she got through her surgery well and that she's doing better. Uh, we thank you that Gail is still, uh, even though receiving another uh, second round of treatment that was a little different, that's made her feel not so well, but yet, God, we thank you for the strength you give her. And Lord, I just feel led right now to pray for Brother Chuck Nalen. It's been so long since he's had that car accident or truck accident and he's still recuperating from all the damage that was done. But, Lord, I lift him up to you, and I pray for Angie, Lord, as she ministers to him, that you will give her the strength she needs. And, Father, we make all of this prayer in the precious name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray by saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us of our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. If our ushers will come forward now, we will now honor the Lord by the giving of our tithes and offerings.
that you would use them through this church to make a difference in the name of Jesus. For it's in his name we pray. Amen. Good job, choir musicians. So proud of them. Let us now join together in our scripture reading as I read from Proverbs 6, 6 through 11 and Mark 10, 44 through 45. Take a lesson from the ants, you lazy bones. Learn from their ways and be wise, even though they have no prince, governor, or ruler to make them work. They labor hard all summer, gathering food for the winter. But you lazy bones, how long will you sleep? When will you wake up? I want you to learn this lesson. A little extra sleep, a little more slumber, a little folding of the hands to rest. And poverty will pounce on you like a bandit. Scarcity will attack you like an armed robber. So Jesus called them together, and he said, You know that in this world kings are tyrants, and officials lord it over the people beneath them. But among you it should be quite different. Whoever wants to be a leader among you must be your servant, and whoever wants to be first must be the slave of all. For even I, the Son of Man, came here not to be served, but to serve others, and to give my life as a ransom for many. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Well, today we continue our sermon series on the disciplines of a Christian, and we're getting to the, the idea of servanthood. Well, we're going to be looking at why we as Christians should be servants instead of sloths. But I, in true D. Dowdy form, I tried to find, since it's going to be sort of a heavy sermon, 
a couple of funny things to kind of start it out. So I found some corny dad jokes about laziness. Do you know what kind of exercise lazy people do? Diddly squats. <laughs> do you know what you call a country full of lazy people? A procrastination. My wife accused me of being lazy the other day. I don't know why I didn't do anything. <laughs> and I love this one. Your mama is so lazy that it takes her nine months to tell a joke. <laughs> we kid about being lazy, but, and we all have our lazy days. I think it's okay every now and then, but overall, our American society doesn't value laziness, does it? And that today you'll notice that I use the word slothfulness rather than lazy because slothfulness is even worse than laziness. It's considered one of the seven deadly sins that can eat away at us and destroy us from within. It's more than being lazy. It's like a sin to, uh, to the God-given human spirit that causes laziness, despair, and numbness. And it's brought about by the fall of humanity. It destroys minds and bodies, societies, and relationship with God and others. Maxie Dunham says that there's three types of slothfulness. Mental sloth that would make us want to be a couch potato rather than to read a good book. And when I read that one, I went, ouch. Moral sloth, when we'd rather gripe about things in our world than to do anything about it. And spiritual sloth, when we just go through the motions of religion rather than having a relationship. So obviously slothfulness is not what we should be as Christians because slothfulness causes us to pass the buck, to never take responsibility. <clears throat> Many churches in the U.S. are declining. We think... I think that has also got to do with what the mentality of many Christians have today. They think that all you got to do to be a Christian is come to church, hear a sermon, and go home and forget about it. Or maybe do a few things to grow your own faith. But one of the authors that I read in preparing for this sermon says that he believes the number one sin in the church is not sexual sin or things like lying or cheating or stealing, but instead it is slothfulness. The idea that there's things that need to be done in service to Christ, but I'm not going to do it. So many in the church don't want to help out or be involved. Some will say, well, I've done my part. I want to sit back and do little now. But did you know there's only one retirement plan that Jesus offers for Christian? And it's not in this life. He told a parable once about a servant in Luke 17. He says, suppose one of you has a servant plowing and looking after his sheep. Will he say to the servant when he comes in from the field, come along now and sit down and eat and take it easy? No. He'll say, prepare my supper. Get yourself ready and wait on me while I eat and drink. After you may, Afterwards you may eat and drink. Will he thank the servant because of what he did? No, he, he said, Jesus said what we should say is no. We are unworthy servants who are only done our duty. Jesus is reminding us till the day we meet him, we are called to serve him and to do what is required to help the kingdom grow. Some people today, though, say, well, I'm just too busy. Well, I got to thinking, what if Jesus says he's too busy? What if when we get to the pearly gates, he says, you know, I just don't feel like unlocking them today. Eh, just, matter of fact, y'all can just go the other direction. I'm not going to let you in. What if God didn't have time for us what if he was too concerned about other things rather than our lives? Some will say, well, I can't do what I used to do. And believe me, I understand that. Many people in this church have served faithfully over the years. And so some of you may feel like that you can't serve. 
And I understand that because physical maladies. Or some may feel like, well, I'm too old and I, I'm not needed anymore. But folks, let me assure you, everyone is needed. If you look in the newsletter, you're going to see about some of the new things we're going to be trying. And even if you can't physically do it, there's one important thing you can do. All of these events need to be bathed in prayer. You can be active in praying for the ministries of this church. You could be one that volunteers to do a card ministry to help send out cards to people when they're sick or on their birthdays or anniversaries. Now, I'm not saying, one thing I want you to hear, I'm not saying that this church has not done a lot. I am thankful for the many years that people in this church have served. Uh, just for example, this past Friday, a group of ladies met here to decorate the shoe boxes. It's going to be mailed out to the kids for Christmas in other countries. Or before the pandemic, many of you were involved in the 30-minute Thursday program we were doing. Many of the older ladies in our church years ago used to work on quilts and they sold those quilts to help raise funds for this church and the methodist men with their yard sale helping to raise funds for ministry of this church so i commend us commend all of you for your hard work but let me encourage you we as a church can never sit back and sit on the past of what we've done we must stay involved because as you see in the newsletter, we're trying to do a lot of new things so that we can attract people to the gospel of Jesus Christ so they can get saved, they can have eternity. But let's just be honest, we also want our church to grow. Since the pandemic, most churches have still shrunk. We're, we're definitely not where we were. We're better, but before the pandemic, every Sunday we would have at least 120 almost every time. Last Sunday, we had 90. Today, we're going to have about 70. Folks, we have to realize this. If we do not do something to get more families in this church, in 20 or 25 years from now, there may be a for sale sign on the front of this building. And for that, for us to avoid that, we all are called to be involved in this ministry. We're called to be servants and not sloths because slothfulness causes us to become uncaring about others. Jesus once said, one of the ways that I'll prove my love for you is I will die for you as my friend. What if, G what if God was slothful and uncaring? What if he just said, this is too much work for these people keeping up with these people. They, all they do is sin. I'm done with them. And at the flood, what if that had been the end of humanity? You know, a lot of people think that the opposite of love is hate. And as bad as this may sound, at least hate has some passion involved. But slothfulness indicates a giving up, a not caring about the relationship anymore. It causes you not to care about other people or God. Think about some of you when you were first in your relationships with your significant others and the kind of things you used to do for one another that over the years you might not do anymore. And as you don't do some of those kind of actions, sometimes the love can cool. Well, the same thing happens with, with our relationship with God. If we become slothful in our relationship with God and we... We find excuses not to pray. We find excuses not to read the Bible. And before you know it, we say, well, it's okay to skip church this Sunday. I'll catch it next Sunday. Well, next Sunday rolls around and you're not in church. And before you know it, your love for God cools. So slothfulness can help can hurt relationships because another thing that slothfulness does is it causes us to be numb to ourselves. And to other people. Someone also said that the opposite of joy, uh, that sloth is the opposite of joy, and it's the antithesis of hope. Because when a person gets eaten up with slothfulness, they have no passion left in their lives. All they care about is themselves and their problems. And do you know that I found an example of where this happened? 
in the Bible, y'all remember the story of King Solomon. He's David's son. He starts out great, doing good, but then he begins to sin and sin and sin. And, and before you know it, he's got the, you can hear the slothfulness, this numb attitude when he writes in Ecclesiastes 2, 1 through 4. Everything is meaningless, says the teacher. Utterly meaningless. What do people do get for all their hard work? Generations come and go, but nothing really changes. Hear that don't give a rip attitude? Someone once said this. Sl the souls in sloth is beyond mere sadness and melancholy. It is melancholy. It has removed itself from the rise and fall of feelings. A good person desires God and the things of God. A sinful person desires things in place of God, but at least they're still recognizably human. But a slothful person is a dead person, an arid waste. His and her desire has dried up. One thing that happens to us when we go through hardships in our lives we may unintentionally become slothful because what we do is we pull into this little shell in our lives and we whine and complain and depression grows and grows and grows. And that's why the way you treat slothfulness is servanthood. When you're down and out and feeling negative, get out and do something for somebody else and you will feel better. Also, we're called to be servants rather than sloths because it causes us to be pa uh, passive spectators rather than active participants. Remember a few weeks ago when I preached on worship and we said that even though the word worship can be a noun, it's also a verb, that it is something we come into this room to do for God. Worship is not just coming to listen to me preach or the choir sing. If that's all it is, that's just pure entertainment, spiritual entertainment. But worship is something we do for God. Well, folks, what happens when we become slothful Christians, it's all about us. We want to be entertained. We want to do and think what we want to think. <clears throat> and then what happens is, People in the church will begin to think, well, I know there's a lot of things that need to be done in my church, but I'm not, I don't want to do it. Or they'll say, well, I want to go to a church that has a lot of things to offer, but they're not willing to help to do any of those things. Jesus said in his reading that we read from this morning that if we are to be his followers, we're not called to live a life of being served by others, but instead we are called to live a life of servants to others. Slothfulness makes us think, mind our own business, don't get involved, take care of self. It says, don't volunteer, don't help, let others do it, let them serve you. But what happens if everybody develops that attitude? Jesus says, deny yourself, take up the cross, follow me, and serve others. And that's why I'm so glad this church over the years has really tried hard to reach out to others, to show the love of Christ to others. But as I said earlier, just because we've done those things in the past doesn't mean we can sit back and chill today. Some of us in the room perhaps have watched other people do stuff while we didn't. Maybe it's time now for those to step up. We are the hands and feet of Jesus. We have been charged with the message of reconciliation. And those of us who've been on Emmaus Walk are aware of a token that we people that have been on Emmaus have received. On that token it says... Jesus is counting on you. Church, have you ever thought about that? Jesus is counting on you to be active, to serve the Lord, to lead people to Jesus. 
We are the hands and feet of Jesus. And I am so glad that our God is not a slothful God. Instead, he, as the God of the universe, took on a form of a servant on the night before meeting with death. What did Jesus do? He got down on his hands and knees and he washed the feet of his disciples to show us what God values. Yes, be born again. Yes, get saved for eternity. But as I've said before, we're not just saved for eternity. We're saved for now so that we can make a difference in our world now. Our God is a passionate God who did the hard work of saving us. And folks, church is calling, that God is calling, Jesus is calling us, church, to serve him through our church and our community. Are all of us here today willing to serve? And as I said, if all you can do, which is still important, is pray. You can't do some of the physical stuff. At least you can be highly involved with prayer. So are we willing or do we just want to sit back and take it easy? I hope all of y'all are willing so that we can be involved in leading people to Jesus and giving this church a future. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we come before your throne of grace. Lord, the truth of the matter is, as I said in the first service, when I work on these sermons, you bump me up, said, aside the head first, and make me, uh, I get convicted. And Lord, we know that your purpose is not to offend, but that your purpose is to convict so that we might repent and through your spirit do better. Lord, for those that have physical maladies that prevent them from being able to do the services that they used to perform, we ask, oh God, that you help them to realize they're still needed and that they can be involved. But Lord, for those of us that still can, put in our hearts a strong desire to serve you so that our faith will be exhibited for others. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. This morning, uh, we have the privilege of having a, a new person unite with our church family. Today, Miss Barbara Hodge comes from Millbrook United Methodist Church. And although she's only been physically attending with us for a short time, she's actually been virtually attending our church for a good long time. What's been so awesome about this, uh, this outreach ministry we've done about having uh, live stream services is she is one of several that have watched our services and feel like this is the place that the Lord wants her to be. And so she's going to come forward, but I always like to make the invitation if there's anyone else here today that would like to unite with this church, you're welcome to come also. So Ms. Hodge, if you will come forward. <clears throat> Okay, since you're already United Methodist, I said the only question I have to ask you, will you be late, faithful to Christ through this local church and support it by your prayers, presence, gift, service, and witness? Amen. I'll be the first one to welcome you to our church. After we have the closing song, I'll ask for y'all to just come out this way and meet her before we go to eat so, as our newest member of our church family. You can just... Please stand together as we join to sing three verses of I Need Thee Every Hour.